Well, what's going on here? Bruce and Dick, aren't these the cutest puzzle balloons you've ever seen? Yes, they're very unusual. Some balloon factory was going out of business, and Alfred was able to get the exact ones I need for a party I'm giving for underprivileged children. My pleasure, madam. They really are quite a novelty, aren't they? Verily, Aunt Harriet, quite a novelty. Well, all's well that... That ends well, sir? Well... <laughs> day of the exciting National Olympics. Thousands of people were present to witness the events, and millions more were watching at home on their TV sets with Sweet Polly Purebred, Ace TV reporter, bringing them the news. And so, dear viewers, the first event of the National Olympics is about to get underway. This will be the broad jumping contest, and Stretch Legs is to be the first jumper. For a few words about Stretch, here is our sports editor, Al Mellon. This stretch legs is really something to see, folks. Some folks around here claim stretch is gonna set a new world's record. They say he's wearing extra heavy spiked shoes that he figures will throw him a few extra feet. And there goes stretch now. He's running, gaining speed, and now he leaps. He's in the air and going up and up and up and up and why, he's going right up into the sky. Folks, that one is really gone. Dondest thing I ever saw. He struck out down the field, leaped into the air, and took off like a bird. Had his feet out in front of him, and those feet just seemed to draw him right up to the clouds. Everyone is running out onto the field, but no one seems to know what to do. Oh, I have a special report from the judge's box. In order to try and get an accurate measure of stretch legs jump, the judges have sent a plane up. Plane may be able to catch him and check on his forward distance for the broad jump. While Sweet Polly is waiting for more reports on that really strange event, we take you to the other side of the field where the weightlifting is underway. Right at this moment, Pierre Lestrong is about to try and press 300 pounds over his head. And there he goes. That boy is going, 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 jumping, catfish folks. That old Pierre Lestrong is lifted right up off the ground, dumbbell and all. He's up in the clouds and going like a cannonball. It's all so unbelievable. Another athlete zooming right up into the sky. Oh, here's one of the judges now. Perhaps he can tell us something. Judge, do you have any word for our viewers about these two strange events? <clears throat> well, unless these men come down, they are, in my opinion, disqualified. And uh, I say you can't count what you can't see. But have you heard any reason that might account for them going up into the sky? Oh, no comment. The whole thing is impossible and against the rules. Look, sweet Polly, another one. It's a pole vaulter, ladies and gentlemen. Using an aluminum pole, he has been lifted right off the ground. The situation seemed unexplainable. The rest of the events were canceled. The Army and Navy were called in. Scientists all across the country were put to work to try to explain the amazing rapid ascent of the athletes. Professor Bruno Heimerdown had this to say. Uh, those boys is going right up through the atmosphere. In my opinion, the whole thing is tied in with that strange new planet we spotted a, a week ago. Other scientists agreed with Professor Heimerdown. A new planet seen for the first time only a week before seemed to be causing the strange incidents. In a special White House conference, Air Force General Ricketts had this to say. This is a matter of life and death. We must find out what's on that planet or we may be wiped out. But who could do that? Who could get to the strange planet? Underdog. 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 Oh. 
And so the whole world called on Underdog to save it from some unknown menace. Uh, but wait a minute. We'll have to send tons of equipment to the planet. I don't think Underdog will be able to handle all that. You're right. We will have to go ourselves by rocket ship. How long will it take? Well, now let me see. It will take exactly 14 years, 3 months, and 22 days. Uh, good, good. Let's get started. And 14, 14 years. years. Three, Three months, months and twenty-two days. I am a hero tried and true. What can I now do for you? Quickly, the scientists explained the problem and told Underdog what he must do. And you must also take along several tons of scientific equipment. Uh, can you do it? There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. So bright and early the next morning, Underdog prepared to take off for Planet X. Wait, wait, I'm coming with you. I want to bring a first-hand report of the story to my television audience. I'm sorry, sweet Polly, but you can't go. It's much too dangerous, you know. We'll see about that. Nothing stops a good reporter. And so, after shaking hands with all the scientists, Underdog took off for Planet X. <laughs> Moving faster and faster until he reached the speed of light, Underdog soon landed on the sinister planet and immediately began unpacking his equipment. Mm -hmm. Loony sandwiches, peanut butter and jam, pickles, hard-boiled eggs. Surprise! Surprise! Sweet Polly! I stowed away. I intend to cover the story as a reporter. Then the thing to do is look around and see what strange things can be found. And strange things could be found. For even as Underdog and Polly unpacked the equipment, they were being watched by two strange creatures, the Magnet Men. Look, Magog, Earthmen. Mm, do you suppose they brought any food? Yes, yes, look, plenty of food. I'll open the sandwiches while you get the radio set up. But as Underdog was setting up the radio... Delicious. Have a bite. More. Come face to face with me. I can't fight what I can't see. <coughs> There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. to you. If they don't, what will you do? Mm, this is our great gravity gun. With this mighty weapon, uh, we can pull your planet away from the sun until it is here beside our own planet. But our planet would freeze. All life would perish if you pulled us away from the sun. Mm, yes, but that is what we will do unless the Earth agrees to let Underdog bring us all your metal. Mm. 
return to Earth and tell them mm, they have only mm, 24 hours mm, to give us their answers. Helpless against the strange power of the great gravity gun, there was nothing Underdog could do but return to Earth and do as the Magnet Men had commanded. You tell the people on your TV show while I tell the scientists what we know. And so Sweet Polly told her viewers the sad news. Yes, dear viewers, we must all give up everything we have which is made of metal. Our cars and coins and shaving razors and irons and... Not on your life. I don't believe a story like that. Nobody can pull the earth away from the sun, and nobody's getting my car. And think what you'd get to look like without your shaver. We won't do it. Viewers across the country reacted the same way. And at the TV studio, Sweet Polly was mobbed. Get her! Get her! Get her! Get her! Get my car! That's what they want! Underdog, help! Where, oh, where has my underdog gone? Oh, there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Stop all this fighting, I beg of you. What Sweet Polly told you is really true. We oh, won't do it! We won't do it! I'm my car! No! Never! Uh, oh, hold on, just one cotton picking minute here. I am Professor Bruno Heimerdown, and Underdog has told me all about this business. Oh, tell them, Professor. Tell them what they must do. I say you must do nothing. The whole thing is a bunch of rubbish. Nobody has got something which can pull the earth from the sun, and that's that. And nobody is getting my gold watch, neither. The people won't believe what we two saw, and majority rule in our country is law. And since even you can't stop the magnet men, that means we shall have to let the earth perish. Oh, no. <laughs> but there seemed to be nothing the heroic underdog could do. On the strange planet, the magnet men were waiting. Underdog has only one more hour. If he does not return, we shall turn on the great gravity gun. All life shall perish on Earth, but we shall have their metal for food. Prepare the gun. Oh, dear. It's almost time. One minute to go. What can we do? The fools refuse to give up their metal. Turn on the great gravity gun. And as the tremendous force of the great gravity gun reached the Earth, buildings fell over. Trains tipped over. Great ocean liners capsized. And then after the first twist, the Earth was slowly pulled toward the planet and away from the warmth of the sun. The world got colder and colder. Waterfalls froze. Showers froze. <laughs> and snow began to cover the world. The people panicked. But it seemed as though there was nothing Underdog could do. I'm sure that I could save this land if I knew how they held my hand. And how did they hold me by my wrist? Wait, my bracelet, your ring, they are both metal. Oh, yes, of course, I see at last. It was my ring that held me fast. Him. 
I have no metal on my hand. So now I'll stop what you have planned. this fight, I must go and put the earth to right. And using his great strength, Underdog pushed the earth back where it belonged. Where it was warmed by the sun so that the snow melted and once more showers showered. And waterfalls fell. And when the earth was once more back in place, buildings were back in place. Trains were on the track. The ocean liners loaded. And once more, the people could look up in the sky and say, look in the sky, it's a plane. It's a boy. It's a frog. A frog? Not plane, nor bird, nor even frog. It's just little old me. Underdog. <laughs>